Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lesson, which is going to be on the hero's journey and character archetypes. So far in our study of the hero's journey, we've learned about the idea that many stories and movies will follow a similar pattern. The hero is in their ordinary world, and we see them in their regular ordinary life. Often we see the flaws of the main character as well, whether it is that they are unfriendly or just plain lack social skills. This is a flaw that the hero will have to work through and overcome by the end of his or her journey. The ordinary life is brought to a halt with the call of adventure, something that calls the hero to their adventure. Although, as we know, often the hero may at first refuse the call or have the call refused for them. After that, the hero is usually met with a mentor who will help guide, equip, or give advice to him. And so when that call of adventure calls upon our hero yet one more time, the hero will then cross the first threshold and embark on their quest. Who knows where this Farquad guy is? Luckily for him, his mentor will be there to go along with him. Our hero will encounter tests and challenges. And their wills will be tested as they go on through their adventure. Meeting both allies and enemies. But as a result of it, the hero will gain new skills, show growth, and help to unravel the path towards victory. However, things must get dark before they get good. In the approach to the inmost cave, the hero prepares for a major challenge. Sometimes, it's the unfolding of a plot, planning for a dangerous event, or the revelation of a secret. And with the arrival of the ordeal, the hero faces an inner crisis or physical test that brings them to their lowest. It can be a close encounter with death, or a symbolic death, where everything seems wrong or lost. However, the hero does not stay there. The hero overcomes the ordeal and comes out of it with a reward. Prize, knowledge, power, or a token that will help him or her defeat the last challenge. Whether you view the prize as a friendship restored, or the dragon that will get you to the wedding on time. And now we approach the last stretch, the road back. The hero approaches the final task that will bring things back to the ordinary world. And that final task is called the resurrection, the climax of the story, a final battle or ultimate test for the hero from which they must come out victorious. And as we know, they normally do. And once done, the hero returns to the ordinary world back to normal and completes their journey having grown and changed. Another word for this kind of pattern that has emerged from millions and millions of stories is called an archetype. A pattern or model from which all things of the same kind are based. And in addition to there being archetypes for stories, just like the hero's journey, there are also archetypes of characters. These are the typical characters that we see over and over again in stories, like the hero, the mentor, the shadow, allies, and more. Psychologists have theorized that these character archetypes are actually drawn from real-life models, and therefore allow the readers to identify with the story, the result of this being characters and tales that draw on the readers into the story. While there are several arguments for the different types of character archetypes, today we are going to focus on eight, the protagonist or hero, the shadow or antagonist, the mentor, the ally, the herald, the shapeshifter, the threshold guardians, and the trickster. To begin with, a good hero or protagonist is one who wants something, a story goal, and sets out to get it. The protagonist is the audience's personal tour guide on the adventure that is the story. It's critical that the audience relates to them because they experience the story through their eyes. During the journey, the hero will leave the world they are familiar with and enter a new one. Yeah, the new world will be so different that whatever skills the hero used previously will no longer be sufficient. Together, the hero and the audience will master the rules of the new world, and by doing so, save the day.
An important aspect when designing a hero is to determine their drive. For example, in the case of the hero, the protagonist is the one who rises to meet a challenge and saves the day, such as Harry Potter, Frodo from Lord of the Rings, or Spider-Man. In the case of the lover, the romantic lead is the one who is guided by the heart, such as Romeo from Romeo and Juliet, or Belle from Beauty and the Beast. There's the outlaw, the rebel who won't abide by society's demands. And these would include Katniss from Hunger Games, Shrek, or Han Solo from Star Wars. And last but not least, there is the explorer, a character naturally driven to push the boundaries of the status quo and explore the unknown, such as Captain Kirk from Star Trek or the archaeologist Indiana Jones. Knowing your hero's drive is important because that should be mirrored in your shadow archetype, also known as your antagonist or your villain. The shadow wants to stop the hero archetype from achieving his or her goal. While this character is often evil, there is often a reason, an opposite drive for the villain. For example, in the case of Lord Farquaad, all he wanted was a perfect kingdom. To this end, the villain either wants to achieve the opposite of what the hero wants, or has a weakness, which is the hero's strength. Here, Dumbledore explains to Harry that Voldemort could not touch him because he was protected by love. The hero's main guidance throughout the journey is the mentor. The mentor comes in many different forms, but they serve a critical purpose. This archetype is there to equip the hero through items, or the mentor will provide knowledge and skills or encouragement that allow the hero to be victorious in their later conflicts or to be wise in overcoming their flaws. Another archetype would be the allies, which function as the hero's companions. They may serve as co-travelers, conversationalists, or characters that help to introduce the audience to the world of the story. They often complement the hero by fulfilling the parts the hero may lack in, or help the hero discover alternate courses of action. The Herald appears at the beginning to announce the need for change in the hero's life. They are the call to adventure that set the entire adventure into motion. This can either be an object, like the Hogwarts letter for Harry Potter, or the piece of resistance in the Lego movie. Or it can be a character. In fact, the Herald can be someone who follows the call to adventure to make sure the hero goes on his or her quest. Threshold Guardians represent the common obstacles of life we all encounter. In storytelling, they serve as opportunities for the hero to test his or her abilities and grow in strength. These archetypes may take the form of lesser villains, natural forces, or puzzles. Although, when they are bested by the hero, Threshold Guardians may sometimes turn into allies. The shapeshifter blurs the line between ally and enemy. Often, they begin as an ally, then betray the hero at a critical moment. Other times, the loyalty is in question as they waver back and forth. Shapeshifters benefit stories by creating interesting relationships among the characters, and by adding tension to scenes filled with allies. And last but not least, the trickster adds fun and humor to the story. When times are gloomy or emotionally tense, the trickster gives the audience a welcome break. Often, the trickster has another job, challenging the status quo. A good trickster offers an outside perspective and opens up important questions. Or it's just there to make the reader or audience laugh. I'm only joking. I am Fred. And so that's it. Eight of the many different archetypes of characters that can be found in centuries of literature and movies. 
However, while archetypes are a great way to start designing the characters, it's important to know that there can be as many character types and combinations as there are kinds of personalities. The key to creating believable characters that readers will relate to is to think about the ways that your character will behave in different situations. Archetypes can help, but they aren't immovable roles. And that concludes our lesson on the hero's journey and the eight archetype characters. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with writing your hero's journey narrative.